Uh, congrats on the show. Um, it's a show that has done fantastically well for, for so many different reasons. Um, what was the what was the lure for you and how, how did you kind of first get the call to say, would you be interested in, in joining us on this? Well, for me, it was, you know, I mean, I was a fan of power, you know, the opportunity to work with Courtney Camp, with 50, with Sasha Penn. And the the creative lore was outside of the my character, Howard, you know, the we saw, you know, the monster that Kanan was and the idea to explore how, you know, who was this innocent kid that was just a teenager with pimples? How does he become that? You know what I mean? And uh, because we all have a beginning. And um, and so that was really uh, uh, something that drew me in to, to sort of explore that, you know, the innocence of Kanan. Yeah, and I mean, it's a, we've seen, I was joking with uh, Patina just now about how, and I've actually just read it online about how some of the producers have said it's kind of like a Marvel thing and that there's so many different timelines and so many different characters and so many different things going on <laughs> at once. Um, but that, I mean, the success of the show has just been in, incredible. I mean, why do you think it's, it's, it's touched a nerve with people? Do you think it's, like you said, it's kind of the, the, the realistic aspects of it and the fact that it's this continuous story of these people who were, you know, quote unquote, you know, innocent people. And then obviously if life takes over as it were. Yeah. I think, I think the, the key, I think one of the key things is authenticity, right? Like I think like, and, and it's also duality. It's like, cause we all have that. We all have duality within us as human beings. Like there's two sides. Some people have three, four or five, sides. like, you know, but we experience things. Um, we, we have our, our, our inner aspirations, but then we're in this environment and which indoctrinates us in a certain way and you have to adapt and so forth and so on. So I think that what they've done brilliantly in power so far is like sort of lay that out, you know, through, you know, ghost. Like it was just like this guy who was just sort of, that's the guy every guy wants to be. That's the guy, you know, the, 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 the women want to be with and stuff like that. You know, but he, and he's straddling the fence of life. Like, you know, I come from this, I know how to do that, but I'm trying to do this and I'm trying to do better. And I, I feel like it, it's sort of like we all get to live vicariously th through, you know, that type of character. And, but with, with, with Raising Canaan, it's different. It's, <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, because Canaan, which I think 50 played brilliantly, you know, he's on a side of the fence and he's he's all the way about it. But with Raising Canaan is so interesting because, it, again, it, it, it's like, but how does someone become that way? You know, and so we meet this kid who's just like a teenager, like a pimply faced teenager who's going to high school, who's like trying to figure out life, you know, and and what are the things that can happen to a person that can lead them to become what we've already seen. Yeah. You know? Also, I mean, it's a show that um, so many people have taken. Uh, so it's, it's been so successful, as I say, but it, it seems to me that it, it also showcases a lot of people and cultures and stuff like that that we, we don't very rarely see. And, and Patina was saying that, you know, she plays a character that's a strong woman that we don't really, you know, you don't really see that in other TV shows. Just wondering how important you think that is for, you know, this show and the shows like Empire and so many other great TV shows, spending more time with these characters and in these kind of communities to showcase just what is, you know, going on and that these, that these people exist. Yeah, I mean, it's super important. I mean, I'm sort of, you know, I'm sort of, I guess you could say biased in a, in a sense of, because I'm born and bred in New York, right? And in, in New York City, you know, every culture you can think of, every ethnicity you could think of, we're all compressed together. And so, you know, when I was growing up, you know, I had my, my Puerto Rican friends, my Cuban friends, my Dominican friends, my, you know, Jamaican friends, my Asian friends, my Jewish friends, like, because we all had to get on the train and go to school, <laughs> you know? And so you, but those experiences were great because you, you learned other ways of being, other ways of thinking, other cultures, but you were kind of forced to do that just because of the geography. And so I think in relation to your question, in terms of seeing characters like that, at the end of the day, it's about seeing 
characters and seeing stories that reflect what real life looks like, you know, not trying to force, you know, uh, or project a, a, a version of what, you you know, some people want life to look like. It's like, no, this is really how it looks. You know what I mean? It's a little, it's a little muck, mucky, you know, there's a wrinkle in the shirt and, you, you know, and I think uh, now more so than ever, audiences are really responding to, to, you know, stories like this, you know, because they do reflect the, the life that they actually go out into the world and live. Yeah. How is it for you uh, stepping back? So I know obviously you're from, as you say, you're from New York and, and Brooklyn and everything. How is it stepping back into that environment after you, because obviously I guess you were in your early twenties, forgive me if that's incorrect. <laughs> yeah, no, um, no, it is. <laughs> stepping, stepping back into that world and seeing it from a, a, a perspective where you're, you're slightly older, you know, you've, you've, you've had a career and all that kind of stuff. Stepping back in, was that a, a strange experience, even though it was ultimately kind of fake? Well, show, I mean. yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say it was strange. It was, it was interesting um because you know so there's one one side is filming in the new york that exists now was like completely different because a completely different world than the new york i grew up in from a creative side it was like you know th like this character so even though the show takes place in like the early 90s detective howard is not from that time you know so he's kind of like the old head in that time so everything that's happening in the 90s is new to him so so that was that was interesting and, and, and Sasha Penn and I we we had a lot of conversations about that and trying to keep that uh uh uh, uh train of thought on track you know because it's like you know this guy comes from a time when you know you could just knock somebody upside the head or do this or do that and it's like things had just started to change you know when the show was starting so that that part was fun that part was fun yeah. And I mean, also, I mean, the show, as you say, talking about, you know, telling these stories about all these people, you obviously have made films with people that have made strides to try and tell these stories, whether it's Spike Lee, Ernest Dickers and John Singleton. And obviously you're in Juice, which was, I think, next year has its anniversary, which is which is strange. Do you think this show has a place alongside all of those films and other TV shows that they are trying that they want to tell not only a realistic story, but tell these stories that that, that people want to see and need to be told? Absolutely. I, I mean, I definitely think it has the potential um, to do, you know, and if you guys watch for the next five years, then we'll be good. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, no, I think it definitely has the potential. And I think, you know, it's it, I know from the creative side, from Courtney 50 and Sasha Lionsgate stars, like that's the intent, you know, to really uh, uh, make a statement uh, from a cultural aspect. You know, because, again, like the underbelly of the show is it's a family drama, you know, about a single mom who's trying to raise a kid, which, you know, in, in a lot of cultures is is relatable. And, and it's just about how you unpack it. And, yeah, there's entertainment value and all that stuff around it. But underneath it all, that's sort of the the thread, you know, that would bring people in. Yeah. And in terms of your your character, uh, it's obviously different to other characters you played before. I just wondered what what was it about him that kind of piqued your interest and made you made you think that it was something that you hadn't done before. I mean, the thing about Howard that drew me in is I call him an octopus because he's got tentacles everywhere. You know, <laughs> he's 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 from the hood, so he's got a foothold there. He's in NYPD, he's got a foothold there. But the thing is. He's learned how to manipulate it all for his benefit. And that's his comfort zone is that he knows how to work the system for him, <laughs> you know, and in the, in the first season, you know, his, his control sort of gets stripped from him. And it's like, how is he going to rally um, to try to regain that? And what's he willing to do to, to regain his power? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me ask you about uh, Makai as a performer, because Patina had only good things to say, and and she she says she acts like his mother anyway. But even though it's only on screen, I just wondered what what it was like working alongside him, because he's obviously young, he's raw, but that kind of fits into exactly what he's portraying on screen. I just wondered how how much he impressed you, and and uh, uh, how how good it was to work with him. I think Makai is is a great young actor. Um, you know it. it Man, we, we had some good conversations. You know, I like to to uh, to teach through action, if you will. 
Um, but I think he's he's great, and and he's he has very powerful qualities in terms of his nuances, and that's uh, that's really hard for a lot of young actors to learn how to you know harness that, and he has that. And so that's really exciting to see. And I think it's something that's needed for, you know, this p- particular character playing Kanan, especially going alongside of a uh, tour de force like Patina, who was just, I mean, man, you talk about it. She's like a, a nuclear bomb went off in the room <laughs> every time <laughs> she's on set. I mean, she's such a phenomenal actress and, um, but for the whole cast, to be honest with you, it, it was really a pleasure to work with everyone, and um, and I, and everyone's bringing it, you know. So we're kind of all like, you know, jousting <laughs> with our swords. Like every time we're on set, we're just trying to bring it to each other. And the and not only the characters and the interpersonal relationships, but like the storylines kind of play out where everyone sort of gets the opportunity to do that. So we can sort of duel, if you will. You know yeah, what I mean? absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, just as a just as a final question, and I, I mentioned Juice earlier. I know it has a, its anniversary next year, and that's thirty years, which we won't mention any like ages and stuff like that. Oh, it's, man. it's just it's the amount of films from my childhood, and obviously ones that people have been in. It's the years are like creeping up to very very high. Um, right. I just wondered for you in your career. Now you look, you've had sort of three decades in the industry. Do you do you, do you, have you? Have you been happy? Well, happy is the wrong word, but have you enjoyed the kind of trajectory that you've been on, that you've been able to take on all these different roles, do films and TV and so many different characters? Do you think your your juice persona or person when you were sort of in your early 20s would look back, you'd look back and kind of go, yeah, that's, I'm quite, I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it, it, you know, listen, at the end of the day, I could say that I I feel so blessed to be able to, get up every day and do what I truly love to do and, and feel like I'm fulfilling uh, at least some part of my purpose, you know, but at the same time, you know, when I look back when I was 17, 18 doing juice, you know, I thought I was going to be Elon Musk or something like that. <laughs> Cause I didn't know, I didn't know anything about anything, you know, I was just kind of go up going off instinct so it's 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 just been an, an incredible journey and I'm, I'm incredibly thankful um to have been a part of so many great projects and and this one this new journey that we're taking um it, it's great it really is great because I honestly at the end of the day like people ask me this all the time but I'm like I really love what I do like and to again to get up every morning even though sometimes it's three in the morning four in the morning you know, it's, hey, it's what I love to do, you know, and, 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 you know, I can feed my family and, you know, the basic things. So there's no complaints on my end. Yeah. I guess it's a strange feeling as well that you in Scream 2 and now Scream 5 is coming out. That's kind of like, it's a crazy, <laughs> that's, crazy thing. To hey, on. man, that's, <laughs> that's, that's Wes Craven for you. <laughs> yeah, he's a genius. He is a genius. Uh, Omar, thank you so, so much for your time. Absolute pleasure talking to you and uh, good luck thank with you. the show. Thank you for your time. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? Nice. Hey You Guys.